years, women have been voting in the United States, but this wasn't always the case. Women had to fight for this right through communication and planning. Back in the 1850s, when the United States still allowed slavery, people were discussing ending it once and for all, making these people free. Women wanted to have an opinion on the matter also, but when they tried, men ignored what they had to say, so that they could only watch, and said that women shouldn't be involved in men's matters. Led by Elizabeth K. Stanton, Susan B. Anthony, and Lucretia Mott, women began to rise up and demand their right to vote. During this period in history, women had to communicate with each other to write speeches, letters, books, hold rallies, as well as holding posters to get people's attention and to consider what they had to say. These three leaders and all the women who stood behind them began a movement which would eventually give women the right to vote 72 years later. Elizabeth was born in Johnstown, New York in 1850. From the very start in her childhood, Elizabeth began to notice the difference in rights between men and women. Her mother gave birth to three boys who died very early on. Only Eliezer lived past childhood, but even he too passed away young at only 20 years old. Elizabeth's father was depressed that his last son was gone and looked at Lizzie and said, I wish you were a boy. Elizabeth wanted to make her father feel better, so she decided to acquire many skills so that her father could see she was just as good as any man or son. She learned Greek, was skilled at riding horses, and was at the top of her classes in school, but it was never enough to her father. He only wished even more that she was a boy. One night at a party, Elizabeth met Henry Stanton. Henry was a fire young anti-slavery abolitionist. The two became fast friends, and one day, after they rode horses in the woods together, he proposed to her, and she gladly accepted. However, despite their happiness, her father was not pleased. He disagreed with Henry's anti-slavery stance and would not give the couple permission to marry, so they had to cancel their wedding. Even though they couldn't get married, Elizabeth continued to write letters to Henry, which helped them stay close friends. One day, a letter from Henry came saying that he had been elected a delegate for an anti-slavery convention in London. Elizabeth knew this was her chance to marry Henry and decide to go to London with him. And they did, on May 1st, 1840, and then they set sail for London. On board, Elizabeth met another delegate, Lucretia Mott. Lucretia was a bold woman who wanted equal rights for all. Whenever she saw inequality, she fought to end it. Her and Elizabeth became fast friends and talked about the convention. Elizabeth wished to accompany Lucretia at the convention. At the convention, they spoke openly about slavery and how it was wrong. Whenever women tried to speak their opinion, though, they were ignored or told not to speak. Eventually, they were even asked to stand to the side and be silent. One man was so upset with the men's actions toward the women, they went and stood with the women instead. By the end of the convention, delegates were voted on and selected, but none of them was a woman. This experience left a lasting impact on both women and will motivate their actions for the rest of their lives. In the coming years, Elizabeth had seven children. Elizabeth found that it was hard and often thankless work being a mother and realized how much inequality there was in roles, responsibilities, and expectations between men and women. On a July day in 1848, Elizabeth received a letter from Lucretia which requested she join her and some friends for a meeting. She gladly accepted. At the meeting, Elizabeth expressed her feelings about how few rights women had and how mistreated they were. Lucretia and Elizabeth decided they would hold a women's rights convention on their own shores at the Seneca Falls Church on July 19th and 20th, 1848. At the beginning of the convention, Elizabeth was shy, but her voice started to grow, and soon she spoke with a passion. At the end, she did a bold thing. She didn't want just any right. She wanted the right to vote. The pursuit of this right would be her driving motivation for years to come. Three years after the convention, Elizabeth met another woman who changed her life, Susan B. Anthony. Susan was a brave and bold suffragist who was also determined to gain women's suffrage. The pair of them became close friends. Susan was born a Quaker on February 15, 1820. Her father was a wealthy man who ran a cotton mill and taught her many things. When Susan was 17, her father sent her to Philadelphia's Select Seminary for Females in November of 1837 to be taught things he could not teach. Her teacher didn't like Susan, or the fact that she was smart. Women at school were only taught basic academics, but Susan knew almost as much as a man. Once Susan was old enough, she joined the Daughters of Temperance, a group of women who were allowed to attend political meetings but were to remain silent. 
She made her very first speech as the daughter of temperance about drunk husbands and how they could hurt their children and wives. When she met Elizabeth, Susan became determined for women to get the right to vote. She even voted illegally, saying that in the Constitution it said that she was legally a citizen, which meant she could vote. For casting her ballot in the 1872 presidential election in her hometown, Susan was arrested, indicted, tried, and convicted for voting illegally. She wasn't put in prison, but she was fined $1,000, which they would be nearly $22,000. She didn't want to pay for what was right, so she never paid the fine. Like Elizabeth and Susan, Lucretia also grew up as independent and thoughtful young women. Lucretia Coffin was born on January 3, 1793 on Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. She was raised a Quaker, a religion that stresses the equality of all people under God. In 1811, she married James Mott. Being a Quaker, she wanted everyone to have equal rights, so when she met Elizabeth on the ship to the London Anti-Slavery Convention and they discussed women's rights, she decided to do everything she could to help achieve women's right to vote. Together, these three women worked and communicated with one another their entire lives to fight for the cause of women's suffrage. Even when they were busy in their lives, they would write letters to each other discussing their plans for rallies and speeches. They had to work together and communicate in order to achieve their goal. These brave women all fought for decades, even when it got tough. Even when they were ignored. Even until the end of their days. Though Elizabeth, Susan, and Lucretia never got to see their work finish, we should always remember their sacrifices and important contributions to the cause of equality and the right for women to vote in the United States. <laughs>